tapestry, we're using yarn that's been dyed a specific color to create visual effects. In the dye pot, we can mix different colors of dye and create a wide range of colors, but many of us are not dyers. We often only have a small number of specific colors available to us. If you use weft bundles in, say, a singles yarn, you can put multiple colors in one bundle and multiply the effects you can perceive. Often, though, you only have a few colors and they may not be a singles yarn. They may be something like this Harrisville Highland. Well, using the irregular hatching technique to blend those colors together is one way to really increase the number of colors you can create in a tapestry. So if you wanted to create a gradation from side to side across your warp, hatching would be a good way to approach it. I'm going to start this exercise with two dissimilar colors. I want you to be able to see the difference between these two as we weave. This Irregular hatching is going to create a very stripey effect in the weaving if we alternate them regularly. I'm going to start these two butterflies in the middle. For this first row, I'm actually going to bring the blue back to where I started. I want to create a full sequence at the bottom at the start because otherwise I'm, I'm going to have actually a demi dwee with the full piece of yarn also and you'll have little dots there. So after you've done one sequence then we can start alternating and doing our regular hatching. Point, I'm going to bring the blue over this pink color and I'm going to overlap it by quite a bit, maybe two and a half inches here. And then I just bring the pink in to meet it. You notice here I'm working in meet and separate. Irregular hatching does not work if you don't have meet and separate happening. Now this time I've done a full sequence of the blue. It came over here and went back. So the pink met the blue here and went back. Now I want the pink to come over the top of the blue. And we're working in full sequences here. Making sure you get your bubbling big enough. Shift your shed. Beat it in. Now all I can do is come back. And here's a little review. On the way back there's a popped up warp in the middle and one of the colors has to grab it. It doesn't matter in this technique which one, at least not for what we're doing right now. If you were following a cartoon it might well matter. Let's fast forward a little bit and see what this looks like after we weave it. As you can see here, I've woven quite a bit more of this technique and I've just varied where each of the points of each of the colors go. So here's one more look at irregular hatching. Now we shift the shed before a beat.
See how I'm getting very striped effects between these two colors? And if you stand back to look at what you're working on, you'll see them blending. Always consider what distance you're going to be looking at a tapestry from. Very small pieces we tend to look at up close, but bigger pieces we stand back. And a lot of these blending techniques work really well in larger format pieces.